Welcome to Canadian Politics is Boring! Uh, <clears throat> just getting started, this is Reese. Um, Jesse turned up late, <clears throat> only by about 15 no, minutes. He only turned up late, about 15 minutes late for the recording, so... And you know, he just walked in the studio and left the door open. Well done. This is a really good start. And now he's just left, but closed the door the wrong way, so he's no longer in the studio. And now he's come back in again, realizing his mistake. And now the door's closed. <laughs> <sighs> Welcome, Jesse. Oh, thank you, Reese. Hi, good. everybody. Hi, everyone. God, this is a good start. Are you excited for uh, Wafakak? <laughs> no yeah it'll be all right <laughs> uh our, our patreon is live our patreon is live and please bear with us as uh we make sure that it's it's curated just the way we want it i just threw it together while i you know while i was uh, yeah dri- while i was driving right <laughs> um it's uh, it might not be it might like there might be a change or two in the next week or so so like you know, if Reese promised, like, sending out a crate full of elephant entrails, and I'm like, I don't know if we can promise that, and someone already paid for it, then, like, yeah, let's be a little gentle might, just go out, let's, like, let's send them some goat entrails. Right. It's fine. Yeah. It's a compromise. But no, it's exciting. So, uh, patreon.com forward slash Canadian politics is boring. Um, Easy to remember. And you can support us on a monthly basis for as little as $7 per month. I think seven fifty is where we're going to change it to. Are we? Yeah. Oh, okay, then. Because it's, like, that's the standard... Like the price for Patreon is it starts at like oh, seven fifty. It didn't say that, but okay. <laughs> I'm just uh, getting greedy. I, I want fifty fucking 50 cents, cents more. <laughs> well, so those re- of you who don't know what Patreon is, uh, it is a way to support your favorite content creators, such as us, um, with bonus content. So all the all the free content that we've been giving you every month for Canadian politics is boring is going to continue. Don't worry about that. If uh, if you're if you can't afford anything and or if you just, you know whatever that's fine, it's going to keep going. So Patreon is a way to pay a monthly a small monthly fee in order to for us to give you a create and give you even more shit. <laughs> so if you're like a mega fan, like I want more of this shit, that's the way to do it. And if you're not a mega fan, but you're just kind of like, yeah, man, they're okay. The free stuff's going to keep yeah, flowing. If so. you tune in, but you're not emotionally invested in our journey <laughs> podcast. If you're dead that's on fine. the inside. Yeah, yeah, that's we fine. Get you. It's fine. Yeah, that's you know. fine. It's totally fine. Um, you're still welcome to listen, but just know uh, you'll be listening uh, to, to a mild sense of begrudgingness. Is that a word? <laughs> yep. Begrudgingality. Miss begrudgingality. Tell them what they can find on Patreon, Reese. Um, Bonus episodes. Bonus episodes, uh, li- access to live streams, Q&As. A monthly live stream just for you. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be monthly. That's We're going to do... We'll, we'll, talk, we'll see. Reese, we'll we've see talked it, we'll about see. this. We got to... <laughs> we've if, talked about this. If Reese isn't busy, <laughs> monthly live streams. No, it's, come on. we got to do it. <laughs> one hour a month. That's not too much live to ask streams. for people paying us. And and, and also just... Um, I think we'll probably give you access to limited edition merchandise. Yeah. We'll do like limited runs of t-shirts, those kind of things. If we're that, doing tours in the future, you'll get backstage stuff. and Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. We'll add to it. Yeah. You can use Jesse as a hand puppet. There you go. Loads of different things. <laughs> How much I like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> Jesus anyway, do, should we talk about enough about Patreon? Enough about Patreon. Oh, um, and also Apple Podcasts will be doing through them as well. If you if you're an Apple subscriber, there's a tier you can pay through Apple and it's the same thing. So, yeah. yeah, it's just we'll send you the links. Once we'll we'll fuck X starts, we'll send you all Once, the links. We'll work yeah. it out. We'll work it out. So it's enough, we'll, enough we'll of us it. paying talking about paying us. Let's <laughs> let's give you the So if you want to listen shit, to yeah. all twenty five episodes of the Wolfuck Act Festival, yeah. half of them will be behind the paywall. Every other episode. Half of them? Be. You said it was every three days we give out uh, Oh sorry. So if you do want to listen to Wolfuck Act, every you're gonna get an episode every three days. Unless you're a patron, we will get an episode every day for the full twenty five days. Yep. So last time I gotta keep you in track every time you say something different. <laughs> so yeah, it is every three days. Yeah. Um so first I'll edit out the bit where I said that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that works. <laughs> <laughs> or I'll leave this in and it might be funny. <laughs> 25 days for, yeah. So, um, Wafakak is coming. I'm very excited. Yeah. I you mean, know. you could always just do it for Wafakak and then cancel your subscription. Don't tell them that. But that what would, are you doing? <laughs> You're it's a what horrible I would, salesperson. It's what, what are you I, doing? It's what I would do. <laughs> Reese. 
I used to work when I was 16 at a job in an electronics store called Curry's in the UK. Curry's? Curry's. And um, they used to try and pressurize us to um, uh, uh, sell extended warranties. Okay. But because I was half my time in the warehouse, half my time on the sales floor. I didn't get any commission for it, so you just oh, go. Those fuckers! This is the point where I'm supposed to offer you an extended warranty, but don't do it. It's covered by your house insurance. <laughs> I was the, like the worst salesperson ever. I was just, same within the don't cinema. Be a, don't be a horrible salesperson for us. Yeah, same, same within the cinema. I used to get told off <laughs> because uh, they were like, "No, if you're making nachos, you're only supposed to give them three or four jalapeno peppers." Like only half a scoop of cheese. I'd make the nachos like I'd want nachos, right? You know, plentiful. Yeah. <laughs> So much cheese that you just you just you like, can't breathe. Sweet God, that's a lot of exactly. cheese. It's yeah, a lot of cheese, and there's way too many peppers. <laughs> He's five years old; he can eat it. So <laughs> she took about she took about today's episode. <laughs> Actually, do you know what? If you if you hate your job, yeah, whatever you do for a living, you hate your job. Quit your job and work <clears throat> in an ice cream store or on an ice cream counter because yeah. I swear. I was serving nachos and hot dogs, overpriced hot dogs and nachos. People turn up to buy overpriced hot dogs and nachos. Um, they've already lowered their standards to eat hot dogs and nachos at the <laughs> cinema. And then they're overcharged for them and they just walk away feeling like they got a bad deal. You work on an ice cream stand. Yep. Everyone turns up happy and excited for ice cream. You but, then give them ice cream. And even though it was slightly overpriced, they don't care because they've got ice cream. I've never experienced so much human joy working at an ice cream counter. So if you if you lost, oh, you worked at an ice cream counter. Yeah, when I was when I was in the cinema. So if you have, if you Hold have, on, there was ice cream at the cinema. Yeah. If you've if you've That's lost weird. all faith in humanity in your job and you just want a, a day job that gives you happiness, just serve people ice cream. It's, it's a very is a very uh, I find it a very pleasant exchange. I think there was a it might have been Hatfield Farms. I forget the name of it in Nova Scotia. Here I went with my nephews and my brother, and they. They served ice cream cones, but they bragged that they were serving like the largest ice cream cones imaginable, like on the planet. And so we're like, okay, well, you know, he's just a kid, so he's just going to get a small. This is all he wanted, a small. He did, we didn't tell him that. He, he asked for a small, my nephew. Uh, and they gave him this gigantic, just massive. And I'm like, okay, well, now my other nephew is like, I'm, I want a medium. So... You know, she's like showing off at this point, the server or this. And she just scooped like the ice cream was so big. It took him an hour to eat it and he couldn't finish it. He had to throw the rest away. It was, was it insane. like minus one in temperature to keep it? So it, oh, it was melting melt. everywhere. But oh, it was, was still, it was, yeah, it was huge. And it's like, like an iceberg. It got down to uh, St. John, St. John's before it. But like there's no, the, just picture like the biggest ice cream you've ever seen in your life. Now double that. Like it was insane. And I knew she was doing it just just to prove a point. Just to prove a point. Yeah, like, yeah. there's no way this is what she normally scooped. No fucking way. And I was so tempted just to keep going. Okay, oh, yeah, you think a medium's big? Give me a large. Yeah. Just show me, show me what you got. I went like, to just... the cows on the waterfront. Yeah. It was three times the size of that. <laughs> right? I saw a child's arm break. Oh, the just for those of you know, cows is an ice cream place on the Halifax waterfront. It's not, Reese isn't talking about just random bovines larger hey, than just, ice cream. You mean you don't get ice cream directly out of a cow? <laughs> Anyway, we're talking about anti-vaxxers. Oh, yeah. Just to go from ice cream. That makes oh, everyone... I thought you were going to tell me. I thought this episode was going to be about the flooding in Alberta. You told me specifically, don't look at any news, Jesse, because I'm going to teach you about it this coming Monday. I'm like, now I'm completely out of the loop. And the, all the flooding that's happening in Alberta. Well, be... look at it. <laughs> look at it as a lesson to teach you to go and now read the news. I was going to, but you told me not to. Well, now... <laughs> Do you know what? I forgot about that conversation. <laughs> so anyway, you're about to learn. You're you're about to learn about Canada's number one anti anti vax influencer. <sighs> have you have you ever heard of Chris Sky? Chris Sky or yeah. Guy? Chris Sky. No. So he's a Canadian conspiracy. Not that big of an influencer. Well, he, yeah, he did have a quarter of a million followers on Instagram until he got kicked off the platform. Wow. Um, and he's a conspiracy theorist known for ant being anti-mask, anti-lockdown, COVID-19 uh, denialist, and he also he's involved in the anti-vax movement. I am a little, just as a, a side note, I am a little bit torn about kicking people off of platforms for saying stuff you don't like them to well, say. Just, just wait until you get to the things he said. Well, again, like it's, unless it's like directly inciting 
like hateful violence towards people. Like I said, let's wait until let's we wait get until to the we, okay. Right, right, right. I'm just, but just to, just to uh, first, like just to play devil's advocate on both sides of the fence with that. One, Twitter, Instagram, it's their platform. They can take in and kick off whoever the fuck they want. It's not a right. No. I get it. But secondly, it does kind of feel like it's starting to be. Like a little 1984, a little bit. Like you know, I'm I'm not I'm completely pro vaccination, and, uh, and and yet I still feel like you're not saying what we want you to say. We're kicking you off the platform. Is a little bit. It's not that they, mm. you're not saying what we want you to say. Is you're saying the things that you probably shouldn't say. Um, but again, I, that's but no, because, that's I tell you very what it, you, like you see where yeah, that's yeah, but going? it's a private platform. Yeah, no, again, it's private like it's, platform. They can, they it's, can it's like the fuck they want. But it's, if you, you want to hang out at my ice cream store where yeah. everyone's happy and you want to be miserable, I'm going to kick you out. Go, this ice cream store is a happy place. No, no, get I get out. that. I get that. I do. It's it's the whole movement towards. Okay, so let me let me bring it back even further. It's it's further dividing countries, uh, the populations you of mean countries. Some people are getting their information from a completely different platform from somebody else. It's 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 dividing the countries even further and strengthening our echo chambers. Okay. The people who do not believe what we believe, we are, instead of talking to them, listening to them, trying to have healthy conversations with them, we are pretending they don't exist, okay? We're shutting them out. We're pushing them over there. They still exist. They still say these things, think these things, but we're just putting, sticking our fingers in our ears and go, la, 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 la. But the problem is, is that the way the algorithms work, mm -hmm. things that shock people and make them angry just, just fly it's part of the reason I why stuff is spread. I fucking hate it so it's not, much. It's not, you know, but also um, oh, there was a really funny thing on Reddit. Somebody said that they they hacked, they didn't hack, they they set up their um, parents who were boomers, their smart TV for them. Okay. But they did a child lock on Fox News and all the kind of right-wing <laughs> media channels. <laughs> That's hilarious. So that their parents were like, I can't get Fox News. They were like, I don't know what's going on. And they would have to take the TV back. <laughs> Oh my Which god, was, that's amazing! So, that's anyway, so fucking funny. Um, Chris Sky. So he is the son of. Uh, he's the vice president and also son of the owner of Sky Homes Corp, which build. They look like muck mansions. Let me Can see, you see those homes. All right. They yeah, look like they, just they're just big, just cookie cutter fucking mansions. They're it's just like, yeah, yeah. So you know. Uh, so, so he's a, he's a rich kid, essentially. Right. Um, his father is incredibly successful, and he's uh, enlisted as a like I said, he's listed as a vice president. But the the company stated is not res he's not responsible for the day to day operations of the company, um, and his opinions, comment, and actions are not condoned by the corporation. So they kind of distance themselves from him, from their own vice president. Um, so uh, I went on his website. And I, and I found out how he describes himself. All right. Stop looking at my notes. So I forgot my <laughs> I It's upside down. And, I know, yeah. and, and like I can't, I'm just I'm staring because I, I need some place to stare other than this, your dark soulless eyes. This is, this is from his website. Chris Sky is a motivational speaker and the world's most prolific, prolific human rights advocate. His vast knowledge and articulate delivery are second to none when it comes to examining and presenting the facts to find the truth. That's from his website. Oh god! Like I said, he did have a quarter, quarter of a million followers, and he was shut down by Instagram. But um, so, uh, antihate.ca did a lot of research on his online posts, okay? Because um, he is a public persona, um, and they found um, that he regularly refers to BLM activists as subhumans. Oh wow! And called it a <clears throat> government-sponsored intelligence operation. Um, he made comments saying that black people have the lowest IQ score of all oh, the races. God. Um, he said things about uh, about LGBTQ plus people, um, and that basically trying to link LGBTQ to LGBTQ plus uh, LB, LGBTQ plus community. I love you guys, with, but your um, name is a freaking mouthful, and you know it. I'm it's dyslexic <laughs> as well, so <laughs> right. <laughs> it's really something catchier, please. Um, <laughs> Uh, and he basically tried to for he, Reese he, yeah, for, 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 for the dyslexic <laughs> people, uh, and he repeatedly uh, accused uh, that community of attempts to normalize pedophilia, pedophilia. Which is hold on, what he did? What he tried to claim that um, LGBTQ two plus uh, people were trying to normalize uh, pedophilia, which is like a really old fashioned thing where they're like people are like, oh, if you're gay, then they try and link it with that. Oh, was that it's an old really, fashioned it's an old, sort of it's an old fashioned slur that people still cling on to. Um, and he tried to blame, um, uh, he, he basically blames Muslims for lots of things, horrible stuff, uh, calls them criminals. Um, uh, 
he, this is a quote from him. I get banned for saying Muslims and child rape go together like burgers and fries. That's the kind of thing he, wow. he says. Wow. Um, it's amazing what, it's amazing how powerful fear is. It's amazing because like this is all born, I'm, I'm assuming this is all born from fear, right? Like the fear of the unknown, fear of like, like xenophobia sort of thing. Um, and you don't want to be alone with your fears. So you turn your fear to anger and then you try to get other people to join you in that anger. Yeah. You know, and it's like, it's, this is where, yeah. <clears throat> and uh, he also, had, he, he was complaining about the fact there was a, a, a women's only gym that catered to specifically Muslims. And I think, you know, that goes about privacy and, you know, kind of how... how um, Muslim, That's actually really neat. Yeah, 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 exactly. So you don't have to kind of uh, wear traditional dress when you're trying to work out around other people. So, you know. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and you're... To go back to your Twitter point or Instagram point, these are privately owned businesses and people are talking about it as if they're a right that's being taken away from them. I can't go to this gym because it's a female only Muslim gym. So my rights are being. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, Fuck you. No. Why can't I like, come in and work out? Because <laughs> nobody wants you there. And also you just you, you wouldn't want to go there anyway because of who you are. You just want to because because you're being excluded from it is ridiculous. Anyway, mm. um, and he said, I'm going to open a gym called. S- There's actually I, I want to bring up a. <clears throat> And interest, since we're talking about uh, private corporations being able to do what they want and not a right, there is like, at what point does that cross a line? You know, such as uh, the, the story in the past of the bakery who would not sell a wedding cake to a gay couple, right? And that became that became like national sort of news and the government got involved and, you know, good on them for getting involved and, and trying to make that a thing. But like, Again, at what point do we say, well, Twitter and Instagram can have whatever they want on their planet, on their on their source, their platform, because they're it's a private work. corporation. Yeah, yeah, and at what point do we say, oh, I'm glad the government stepped in and, and made that change for them because we don't like what they did. You know, that's <clears throat> and what they did was wrong. I'm not saying yeah, it was yeah. right or wrong. I'm saying at what point do we say a corporation should be allowed or shouldn't be allowed to do something? Is there a line? Is it a giant gray area at all well, times? I mean, you can go back to the 60s and segregation in restaurants. Right, again, you know, very wrong, that, that right? Made, but it had to be enforced by the government. Mm-hmm. But, you know... No, but my, my but, question is, at what point do... Are we okay? Like, is it... Do you see where I'm going with this? Like, it's... I guess I guess is discrimination against... The idea I'm is... Not, I'm not for discrimination. I'm not for hate. And, but like, these are my values. Why, why can't gay people have cakes, Jesse? <laughs> yeah, this, don't point this at me like I came up with the... <laughs> No, I'm saying, I'm saying, you know, I'm for, you know, I'm all for equality. I'm against hate. I'm against hate speech. I'm against violence. And if a corporation like Instagram, like Twitter, aligns with my values of kicking someone off their platform because they're anti my values, I'm all for that. Yeah. You know, um, and then I go around saying, well, it's a corporation. They could do what they like. You don't want to use their platform. You don't have to. But then you have a bakery who says, fuck you. I'm not selling you a cake because you're a gay couple. And I'll get up and like, oh, well, the government now needs to intervene with that company and tell that company what to do because that company is against my I, values. I don't, I don't know the details. Which is of, everyone should I sell. I don't, I don't know the be, details of that cake. Well, case. Okay. yeah, it was, thought, it was a number of years thought, ago. But do you I see, thought, do you see thought, where I'm going with this? Yeah, like yeah, it's, but, but I, th- I thought it was, like a, it was just a civil lawsuit. I didn't think it was a legal. Oh, it might have been. It might. Yeah, I don't, might, I don't know if the government said, got involved. Yeah, um, they might not have actually. But I mean, to be honest, like it's just bad publicity. You, mm-hmm. What you're going to find is if a business draws a line in the sand like that, then you're going to have like there was a, a restaurant here in Halifax that was anti-vax during the lockdown. Oh yes, I know. And they know they've gone out of business because have they gone out of business? They've gone out of business. That be- makes me so happy. <laughs> but because they 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 were being aggressive and horrible mm-hmm. to, to a lot of people and saying mean things, but they drew a line in the sand. They were like, we we are anti-vax and we're going to stay open and we won't have any restrictions and mm. we won't follow any of the rules. Um, and then the public chose to not go there anymore. Right. So much like that cake, that, that, that place, you know, they had loads of publicity around it. So certain percentage of the population would go out their way to support them because they agree with them. Whereas I suppose it becomes the, the, more of like a free market sort of answer where like exactly. the public yeah, yeah. will you vote, pay, with, they you, vote you, with their dollars. They yeah, vote like, with yeah. their dollars. So, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. the only so, problem with, I guess, Instagram and Twitter is you don't pay to use these platforms. You know, that's it's free for everybody. Well, no, no, no. If, if, if you go onto a social media site or a website and the service is free, you are the product. Mm-hmm. Your data is the product. No, of course. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, he said he was going to open the SWM Fitness Gym, which was straight white male. And he joked. Jesus Christ. Um, he joked, only men of Euro origin with DNA samples to prove they haven't been tainted in the last five generations. What the welcome. fuck? 
I know. So, <laughs> oh my god. So I, oh my god. And he, I'm guessing he's against vaccine passports. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, so uh, him, him and his wife were charged under the quarantine act on October the sixth. Uh, Hold 20- on. What? What are these? What's he kind of like? Oh my god. Sorry. I'm just like. <laughs> Sorry, that was a bombshell. That was crazy. Oh my god. Okay. All right. So, uh, him and his wife were charged under the Quarantine Act on October the 6th, 2020 in Ontario. The Quarantine oh. Act? Yeah, you know, I'm not uh, about following with... following restrictions of under the current quarantine. I'm not. Oh, I didn't. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so hold on. Wait, what? So, so, like, so I'm actually I'm not, not familiar with the quarantine act. So they went to an anti mask event in well, Ireland. In Ireland, I don't, I don't know the quarantine. It's just a law <laughs> that means you have to follow quarantine. Oh, okay. So I guess, um, they yeah, went yeah, to an sure. anti mask event in Ireland. And then, Ireland. Yeah. And okay. then they were on September the twentieth, and then they were spotted at a Toronto anti mask event the following week, meaning they didn't self isolate. Fucking. Hell. Um, and they, inter- they were the first in Toronto to be criminally charged under the quarantine I'm gonna, act. I, I've said this before. I'm going to say it again about the whole anti-mask thing. Okay. And conspiracy theorists who do now and then get something right. I'll say, and that's, the, that's a huge problem with conspiracy theorists. Is it's just planting the I, next no, I think there are bigger problems with conspiracy theorists than sometimes they're right. No, no, because that fuels their fire. <laughs> no, right? it, it makes people say, aha, see, they were right about something, and so everything else they say also yeah. must be right. Yes, it is a big, that is not the biggest problem, Reese. You are, oh my God. <laughs> Maybe all the misinformation and lies. <laughs> so but what I was going to say about anti-maskers is like, I don't know where you're getting information from about why masks don't work or vaccines memes. don't work. Or Just memes. Like memes. Okay. Yeah. yeah, right. But like research memes. <laughs> the whole point seems to be, and I could be wrong, but the whole point seems to be about making themselves come across as correct. I am right. You are wrong. Let me show you why you're wrong and why I'm right. Right. And about personal freedoms. Fuck off. It's Why won the world say how right I am? Right. Yeah. That kind of stuff. So, OK, hypothetically speaking, let's say wearing a mask does nothing. Let's just say hypothetically. OK, that with this whole time, it was a lie. OK, for whatever fucking reason, blah, blah, By blah, big blah, mask. Blah. Ooh, yeah, right. Exactly. Let's just say that what we've been like slightly fucking inconvenienced when walking into a store for two minutes. That's that's what. Or the detriment, that's not my punishment for the past two years, really. Yeah. The whole point of wearing a mask is we're trying something. Yeah. It's not about who's right and who's wrong. It's about Jesus Christ, there's a fucking pandemic. Let's try shit. You know, out at the end of two years, if someone's like proved indefinitely, indefinitely, in, indubitably, that masks were wrong and didn't work at all, I'd be like, well, egg on my face. At least I tried something. I yeah, tried. Yeah. Yeah. What did you do other than try to prove that you're right? You know, what have you? What are you doing to try to help people? Yeah. To, or what if, okay, what if you were right? But what if you're wrong? Exactly. And you've, and you've, been, you've accidentally you've been, killed yeah. all your loved ones yeah, yeah, by exactly. infecting them. Exactly. With, yeah. with your deadly breath. Um, <laughs> so... Uh, he yeah. tried to travel to the Maritimes in October for one of the, you know, the, the stupid rallies on Citadel Hill. Um, yeah, I didn't really get yeah. that. That was kind of weird. They just, um, it's, it wasn't really a rally as much as just people just, just sitting like, watching the fucking sunset. <laughs> like, <it was> just... <laughs> well, everyone took photos of them from a distance yeah. going, hi, you wankers. <laughs> um, the, so he tried to go there, but he caused a disturbance on a flight and was uh, uh, escorted out. Um, he's been placed. He caused a disturb. Hold on, I think back to that. I, I don't think he wanted to wear. I, I couldn't find details. I don't think he wanted to wear a mask on a plane, and they had to escort him off the plane. That's when you knock him the fuck out and put a mask on him. So now he's on the passenger protection list uh, for Flair Airlines. Uh, wow. And they ref- he, Flair Airlines ref- declined to allow him on a flight to um, an event in Alberta. He was arrested by the Thunder Bay Police uh, in April. 18- He's probably loving this attention. I know. Um, and so what happened was he was arrested because he was trying to, they were doing some kind of protest or organized gathering that was illegal. So him and his followers then went to the Breakfast Pig, which is a restaurant in Thunder Bay. What a fantastic fucking name. And demanded free food. What? Why? And the small business owner. For, for what? What? Just because of who they were. Like, we need free food. And Because of what? Because of, they're like freedom fighters. 
You know, like if if when William Wallace in Braveheart was going through the village, people would offer him hot meals because they like. Is that true? Or are I, you don't, just... I don't know. Braveheart's not real. There's so much so much wrong with Braveheart. I, I think William Wallace was real. No, he was. But the, the film Braveheart is massively twisted history. Is it? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, um, and he definitely wasn't Australian. So, um, but the uh, the, <laughs> but I think I think they thought they were like a merry band of, of freedom fighters ro- <laughs> roaming through the forest. <laughs> Dear Squire, your pot of stew looks delicious. May we may we dine with you before we have travelled through the mountains? Our merry band of freedom fighters need sustenance. Instructing the people of old to remove the thin pieces of fabric from in front of their noses and mouths it's for... Who, who else will fight the tyranny of King Trudeau? <laughs> like, like, so anyway, they, they said no. The evil baby balancer. They said no. And then, so what he did was he got them all to leave awful reviews uh, about the small business. Oh, wow. What a giant asshat. Um... Uh, he was also, he told another anti-mask advocate that he wanted to shoot and kill Doug Ford uh, and every premier in Canada. He was reported to the police. Uh, a police constable attended his residence uh, to arrest him based on these threats. Uh, Chris Guy entered a car, drove towards the police officer and then fled. He later turned himself into the police station, was charged with uttering death threats, assault in a police officer and dangerous operation of a vehicle. He sounds really, ba- ask sounds really balanced. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is all an ad for Will Butrin. Yeah. yeah. Um, but he did, in October 2021, he did organize a rally that um october this year sorry he organized a rally in london, How long is it? So in, in london gotta, ontario was he sent to jail or? i don't i think he's had loads of fines and stuff going on okay. but i mean he's he's he's, he's rich so stuff right like, he doesn't does, care crime doesn't matter if you've got money right um so uh he actually wow that's sad and wow that's really true and very sad yeah he organized yeah. a rally in london ontario this october which got a thousand people um and a lot of the local businesses said they felt intimidated by anti-mask and actually anti-vaccine protesters what happens is they'll turn up at small businesses and and want to come in on mass without masks on and things and right and boast about but not being vaccinated so yeah. and then <laughs> um but um i'm gonna sh- so i'm gonna play you a clip oh, of uh, of him and i think i don't know if fame has gone to his head but um this is him so so he was uh he was in nanaimo in bc and he turned up to nanaimo a, nanaimo 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 like the bar nanaimo bar i that i guess i put the two and two together but i did I, an- I couldn't say the first one or the second one so <laughs> have you ever had a nanaimo bar i have yeah i oh, have okay yeah, yeah. yeah they're okay tastes like fun <laughs> tastes <laughs> like fun yeah. um uh so this is he turned up two hours late <clears throat> for his own event and then um, you, there was like music and but they tried to make it seem like a bit of a festival atmosphere. And oh he turned God. up late. And I think what happened is he turned up late yeah. and they didn't let him go on the microphone immediately. They wanted to, the band to finish performing that they, I think, were passing the time. Okay. And he wasn't happy about that. So this is the clip. And now they're playing more music. How about no, that? No, no, Fuck it up. They literally just said they're playing more music. No, they're going to they're gonna shut it off. Oh the last song they just said, yeah. Stop as soon as you walk on the I'm gonna fucking lose it. That's him shouting. Oh, this is the kind of shit that is fucking going on right now. I hope you're fucking ready. Wow. She can hear him swearing. Oh, this is gonna be a good one. So he's just running now into the bandstand and he's grabbing the microphone, I believe. There are children here. No masks, no distancing. And now he's about to take the microphone. Yeah, he's just walking up on stage and grabbing the mic. I've had a wow. I was gonna come to give a really nice speech, and then I show up here and I realize, honestly, you guys, they say when you have nothing nice to say, don't say nothing at all. Well, I got nothing nice to say, but I got a whole lot to say anyway. I don't know what the fuck you people think this is. This is a war against your fucking children. They are coming to inject them with a poison. They are taking your jobs. They're taking your houses. And how do you respond? You spend one or two hours a week freedom fighting by coming and listening to a fucking band play? Just smashed the sunglasses on the floor. 
Are you guys kidding me? This is what you, this is what it means to freedom fight for you. To come and listen to a stupid band and sing and dance. It's while amazing. the organizers are more worried about getting you on a fucking march than getting you to actually do something for yourself. <laughs> fucking pathetic. Each and every one of you should be absolutely ashamed of yourselves. You're walking around like this is a party. Like this is a joke. Like you're supposed to be here having fun. Right. So let me get this straight. <laughs> what a lovely man. He organized this event, right? Yeah. He organized the band. I, pr- I imagine stage, so. And he hired the band and he got them to play. And then when people showed up to enjoy the event that he organized for people, he then shunned and shamed the people for enjoying the event. He And waiting, created. Waiting, waiting ages for him to turn up. He's insane. Oh my god! Uh, my favorite part was when he was—he smashed his sunglasses on the floor in a dramatic gesture. Was dancing around, swearing like, at children, everyone's children, just swearing at the children, calling them motherfuckers and all this kind of stuff. And then an, oh old, and an old dog walks past behind him, just to really. <laughs> wow! <laughs> just to really, wow! 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 Just, just to really, uh, yeah. And, and most recently, since then, this happened three days ago. You know. Um, the uh, the West Edmonton Mall, the world's largest mall. I do. Him and his wife were um, walking through there without a mask uh, to buy knee-length socks for his wife, Jessica. And um, were arrested and pinned to the ground. And I got a lovely picture of him and his wife being pinned to the ground. Oh, my God. Oh, and, my God. By um, four fucking security guards. Face, face planted. And, and then one on his wife. I'm and assuming then, that's and then, his wife. And now he started a campaign called Justice for Jenny. Um but again, I'd like to go back to, after watching that video, I'd like to go back to his, Chris Guy is a motivational speaker and the world's most prolific human rights advocate. His vast knowledge and our ticket delivery is second to none when it comes to examining and presenting facts to find the truth. That's insane. I have an idea. <laughs> it's kind of been, so, just as an aside, violence, violence in general has, as of the past, like, I'm going to say 15 years, escalated to like a horrifying degree when we hear of violence happening to someone it usually has to do with like assault weapons mass shootings um like just large large uh you know th- things like things of that nature whenever we hear violence happening towards someone it's it's something horrific i want to but it's either that or nothing yeah i want to bring back fisticuffs just a good old or a fashioned, duel. just one old, not a, I mean, a duel a is duel. also so, deadly. So, That's so, like it's so, a, a, de- yeah, a like duel to the death, but like, yeah, yeah, exactly. bring back fisticuffs, just a straight up, simple punch to the nose. And that's it. Just leave it as a punch to the nose. And if they attack you again, punch to the nose. Just no, like, no, I, don't I, bring out assault weapons or knives or try to kill people. But just when someone's spouting shit like that, just go up and just say, pop, just to the nose. You know, or, like, <laughs> or just get your geriatric dog to walk behind them slowly to invalidate their point. <laughs> Yeah, and I found a picture of him. He looks like an Adam Sandler character. Holy fuck, he does too. He looks you know, like if Adam Sandler did like had like, like a, a bucket a, of coke, like a yeah, Adam Sandler doing the, the a coked up um, kind of uh, rich kid character in one of his movies. Is that a neck beard or a tattoo of a neck beard? It's a neck beard tattoo, I think. I think he's so yeah. I can't. He looks like he looks like someone. Oh, mel- it is a tattoo, but it looks like a giant fucking neck beard. <laughs> he, he looks like somebody melted a Ken doll. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. I mean, you know, going to make it fun of people's appearances is usually is the, really the least, fun. <laughs> but it's also usually the least, the least intelligent form. But as someone who obviously was worked hard on that. What is he wearing look, there? Is that a bikini? It looks like he's wearing a mankini. <laughs> um, but anyway, I mean, when you've got that much money, you can look what you... Everyone will tell you. He's jacked. Wonderful. I'll give him that. He's I mean, yeah, fucking yeah. I wouldn't jacked. want to get punched in the I wouldn't face. Want, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't advocate punching this man in the nose just because <laughs> <laughs> I now understand why it took four security guards in the West Edmonton Mall <laughs> to bring him down. <laughs> so anyway, uh, so that is Canada's number one anti-vax influencer. Wow. Did you have fun? I always have fun when you teach me shit, Reese. It's, it's a... Uh, it's my only source of education these days. <laughs> but he's been on like, you know, Alex Jones, he's 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 big. Oh, don't compare him to Alex no, Jones. No, no, he, he's Jones. been on the Alex Jones show. Oh fuck. Okay. He's kind oh, of yeah. like he's the he's like uh can he's the Canadian spokesperson for a lot of those like kind of far right media outlets. I saw Alex Jones was on who's the big the biggest podcaster in the world? Joe Rogan. Joe yeah, Rogan. He was on I, Joe Rogan. I watched I, I, I watched I, the I, show. I, I I find Joe Rogan problematic now. Um, I, I, don't, I, I kind I don't of listen. wasn't paying much attention to it, but the kind of people he hangs out with. Well, see, that's 
see I have, you of all people I thought would like Joe Rogan because uh, I feel like you have similar values in that when <laughs> no no hold on I'm, I'm being serious here I don't hang out with Nazis no no hold on you have a way of reacting and treating people who think and act differently than you in the fact that you listen to them and you befriend them without like pointing fingers and yelling at them and telling them they're wrong and fuck you and all that shit you've done it you've actually like turned commenters who've sent angry emails and angry comments you've turned them around where they'd be like wow you're actually way too polite to be yeah but I, but I would never give them a platform yeah i mean you kind of are we've got a podcast and we just talked about half an no, hour about but, this guy <laughs> but i didn't yeah. give him a platform no but i guess what i'm saying is joe rogan um has everybody on his show from both sides he doesn't divide he he listens, which is something we don't have enough of, right? No matter how much he might disagree. Yeah, but, but he also he also. But he, here's where I was going with this when I was listening to Alex Jones. He actually disagreed with like almost everything Alex said vehemently on a show. But he did end it with saying like, "I remember you got so something right once." Like you, he said something along those lines to Alex, like, "Oh, because he's friends with him, but he knows how fucking crazy he is." He's like, "That one thing, that yeah. one time, you got that right, Alex. That one thing, that one time was actually turned out to be correct. How about that?" Just like you know, Alex like, Jones said that there was alien DNA in the vaccines. Oh, fucking hell! Like, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, um, cool. I just. I think there's I think there's got to be a middle ground. While you're right, it's probably problematic giving a platform for these people. At the same time, it is hugely problematic sticking our fingers in the ears and pretend our ears and pretending they don't exist and further dividing our country of you think this way. I think this way. Um, don't talk to me like to the point where we you know, we, we want to know how people think so that we can categorize them and know how to treat them before even meeting them or talking to them. And it's it, it's it's just a massive, massive, massive. It always sounds like a lot of hard work. It, <laughs> am I being too serious for a <laughs> show? <laughs> I just I don't know. I just in the middle of season two of Ted Lasso, it seems like a big distraction. So I fucking love Ted Lasso so much. <laughs> it's such a good show, so, man. Anyway. Oh my god. Uh, so uh, yeah, well, fuck Ack is coming. Well, fuck Ack is coming. Are you excited? Day one. So the night the night before well, fuck Ack, do you remember what you have to do? No, I can't remember any of it. You go to a, a I made it up. You'd ask me stuff and I'd make it up on the spot. Well, no, it is a long Welsh tradition, a long Wafakak Welsh tradition. Please tell me about the tradition that, that, that you've clearly forgotten about. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You you take your family to a nearby farm and you dig up potatoes and you stuff them in a whole bunch of sacks. Oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then when the sun rises on day one of a fuckak, you climb onto your roof with your family and you throw sacks of potatoes at people. Not individual potatoes, entire sacks. Filled with potatoes. Ah, uh, it's all coming people. back to me now. There you go. I remember this yeah. from my childhood. Yep. So there yeah. you go. That's potato sacking. Potato sacking. <laughs> <laughs> so we will see you December the 1st. Yep. You, you, those of you who aren't patrons will get the first episode. That is a promise. And every few days you'll get another another free episode. And uh, if you want to join us for the full month of a fuck act, please join us on Patreon. I'm just searching. Patreon.com forward slash Canadian politics is boring. That's the call, you just to, search our name that's on the call to action. That's the call, call to action. action. Yeah, become yeah. a become a Patreon and yeah. uh, we'll we'll show you, we'll shower you with love. And uh, yeah, and and there'll be a live feed sometime in December, regardless of what Reese thinks of this. This is going to happen. Let me check my schedule. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, we'll see you soon. It's been a long episode. It's been a long episode. That was really fun. All right, happy Wafakak, everybody. Merry Wafakak. I think it's wonderful Wafakak. Wonderful Wafakak. Wonderful Wafakak. See, it's all coming back to me. Yeah. There you go. <laughs>